Good morning again, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day and welcome as we celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord. It's wonderful to be with you all. As we gather this morning, we begin with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess we that confess we are captive to sin and cannot, we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned, have against, sinned against you in thought, word, word, and deed. By what we have done, by, done, by what we have left, 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 left undone. Down. We have not we have loved not you with our whole, whole heart. We have not we loved have our neighbors, neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. For the sake of your son, son Jesus Christ, Christ. 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 Christ, have mercy on us. Give us mercy, give us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of our name. Amen. In the name of our gracious God and as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven. Receive mercy and find grace. God raises you up to new life in Christ. Amen. 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 And may the grace of our Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, amen. The first reading today is from the Second Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. Elijah, Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elijah said, well, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elisha said, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elisha took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elisha sa Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Oh, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit, he responded. You have asked a hard thing yet. If you see me as I'm being taken away from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. 
As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see them, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Word of God. Word of life. Word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning again, and grace and peace to you from God, our light, our life, and our salvation. Amen. I wonder this morning, have you ever had what people sometimes call a mountaintop experience? Maybe a literal one, maybe a spiritual one, maybe both, maybe one and the same. I remember a mountaintop experience I shared with some of my confirmation students from a former congregation a few years ago. We were up at Camp Calumet, if you've ever been to Camp Calumet. We strapped on our snowshoes one cold day and started our climb up Jackman Ridge. While the students leapt up the trail like mountain goats, the chaperones and myself followed behind a little more timidly. My body didn't quite know what to feel by the time we got to the top. I was both out of breath and freezing and overheated all at the same time. I remember sitting down on a big rock, bowing my head and taking a few seconds to think about the life choices that had brought me to that place before even noticing my surroundings. After I caught my breath, I remember hearing one of the girls shout, let's take a picture for Instagram. That's when I looked up and joined the collective mountaintop experience. From the top of Jackman Ridge, we could behold the beauty of the snow-covered white mountains stretched out in front of us as far as the eyes could see. The journey up the mountain was certainly worth the exertion. The combination of the cold, clean air, the warm, shining sun, and the silence of the woods, punctuated only by our chatter and laughter, was a true mountaintop experience. It was an experience of beauty, of seeing the world from a new and different perspective and a sense of connection with something larger than ourselves. But the thing about mountaintop experiences is that they don't last forever. You have to come back down the mountain and you don't necessarily know when that next mountaintop experience will come. 
So you have to be present, soak in the experience and store it up as sustenance for the unpredictable journey ahead. I think Jesus probably knew exactly what he was doing when he took Peter, James, and John with him up a high mountain. What happened at the top of that mountain wasn't necessarily unique. Plenty of other people had seen the heavens open up at Jesus' baptism in the Jordan, and God's voice declared, This is my beloved Son. But this setting was certainly unique somewhere different, removed from their everyday lives, away from the noise and distractions that they were used to. The setting was a place where they could hear and see and experience God more clearly. It might not have been quite as serene as that experience at Camp Calumet though, In fact, it seems like it was terrifying for them, as we read. They fell to the ground and were overcome by fear when they heard this voice and saw Jesus transfigured before them. In a version of this story from another gospel, from the Gospel of Matthew, though, Jesus finishes by saying, Get up and do not be afraid. Get up and do not be afraid. I wonder if this is the central message of all of our mountaintop experiences, whether or not they are truly terrifying. There are moments when we are hyper aware of God and God's presence. And there are opportunities for us to hear God say to us, do not be afraid. Whether peaceful or terrifying, on the banks of a river or in a church or on a mountaintop, These moments are moments when we are suddenly aware of God's presence with us and throughout all of God's creation. As I said, though, the thing about mountaintop experiences is they don't last forever. You have to go back down the mountain. Peter wanted to stay on the top of that high mountain. He wanted to build dwellings for Jesus and Moses and Elijah. But they weren't meant to stay there. They were meant to go back down the mountain and to cherish that experience in their hearts. So I'll ask you again, have you ever had a mountaintop experience? a powerful realization or revelation of God's presence. They can happen anywhere, not just on mountaintops. One of my favorite authors, Henry Nouwen, writes this. At some moments, we experience complete unity within us and around us. This may happen when we stand on a mountaintop and are captivated by the view. It may happen when we witness the birth of a child or the death of a friend. It may happen when we have an intimate conversation or a family meal. It may happen in a church during a service or in a quiet room during prayer. But whenever and however it happens, we say to ourselves, This is it. All I ever hoped for is here. Classical biblical cosmology might have us believe that God is found up high, somewhere up there above us on the mountaintop in heaven. But the paradox of mountaintop experiences is that they show us just the opposite. God is here. God is among us. God is in our midst. And because of God's gracious presence at every moment in our lives, the good and the bad and everything in between, we need not be afraid. As Henry Nouwen says further, these moments are given to us 
so that we can remember them when God seems far away and everything appears empty and useless. These experiences are true moments of grace. So again, our classic cosmology has us believe that God is up high, far away from the earth, mountaintops, heaven. But today we are assured that that is not the case. In Jesus, we see the mountaintop experience, the closeness of the presence of God, walk down the mountain and enter into our humanity, into our daily lives. One of my favorite hymns for this day says, How good, Lord, to be here, yet we may not remain. So since you bid us leave the mount, come with us to the plain. So whether or not you can recall a dramatic mountaintop experience this morning of your own or not, today can be a call for us to look for that same kind of awareness of God's presence in our everyday lives. In the moments when God might feel farthest away, we can remember that God's spirit is always with us with the assurance that we don't have to be afraid, that we too are God's beloved children with whom God is well pleased. We remember that the same Jesus who was transfigured on that mountaintop long ago and far away is still at work in the world, transfiguring and transforming and renewing our lives with God's love. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the body. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith, far and near, and for all, We show God's love in the world. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Uh. For all creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark earth and ocean deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, creatures wild and domestic, we thank you for the beauty of the sun glittering off fresh fallen snow, for the laughter of children building snowmen, and for the fun of making snow angels. May the Spirit inspire our stewardship of creation. Let us pray. Have mercy 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 on God. God. For our newly elected government leaders, for cities and nations, for community and grassroots organizers, and those who advocate for justice and peace, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society, let us pray. Have Have mercy mercy on God.
God of healing, we grieve the loss of 2 million victims of the coronavirus, more than 460,000 in the United States alone. We pray the vaccine is soon delivered to all in need. We ask that you comfort those who suffer from terminal disease and are fighting for their life. Those who suffer from depression and anxiety, those who suffer from loneliness or abuse. We lift up those to the heart of our St. Paul's family. Alan, Alex, Annie, Barbara, Bob, Bob, Bonnie, Brian, Ed, Eunice, Phil, Gloria, Janet, Jerry, Catherine, Ken, Kim, Kimberly, Larry, Lori, Leslie, Lillian, Lorianne, Louise, Lydia, Lynn, Mary, Marianne, Monica, Richard, Rob, Rosa, Rosemary, Roy, Stephanie, Trent, and you, Co. Have mercy. Let us pray. Have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy, O God. For companions together on a faithful journey here at St. Paul's, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, for guidance during the struggles we face, that your glory may be revealed around and among us. Give us faith-filled strength to follow where you lead. Let us pray. Have, have mercy, have have mercy O God. And thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living. Let us pray. We offer these in the prayers of our heart, trusting in your holy wisdom and your amazing grace through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also, also with you. With you. I invite you to share a sign of peace on the screen. Peace, everyone. Peace. I'm going to scroll through to the next screen and get everyone peace. <laughs> we move now to our offertory prayer. Holy God, you give us new life and new hope and bless us with resurrection and renewal. We, we offer our gifts to you, praying, praying that you will use them to bring new life, new life and hope, hope. Renewal, renewal and resurrection to our, our faith and community and, and to our mission and to our people. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done. on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, to your glory and to the and service, service and welfare and of all your people. Your people. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Let your light shine. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Pastor. It's great to see you again this Sunday. Um, and thanks for reminding us that we should be aware of all that's going on around us, all that is around us, and be watchful so we can see God in our world, in our everyday lives. Thank you. Thanks um, for having me with you. It's great to see you all again. We have a we have a busy week this week. Um, Monday tomorrow night at seven o'clock, we have a re, um, we're going to have a conversation. Um, the reopening committee is inviting anybody who wants to talk about um, reopening and what would be you know, what your thoughts are on reopening, et cetera, you're invited to join us uh, tomorrow at seven. The Zoom link, I believe, was in the weekly email. Um, so um, if you didn't get it, check in with Sue and Dick Agney. They'll be able to send it out to you. Tuesday morning, at, or Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening at seven, the council will be meeting. Um, we've changed the dates for the council meetings we're meeting we're going to try meeting the third tuesday of the month instead of the fourth to make it easier for getting stuff um into the epistle in a timely manner wednesday is a big day for us um we have a small group meeting at 1 30 so if you haven't attended one of pastor maria's small group meetings um and you're available in the middle of the day, please sign up for that one. Or there are, I believe, three other sessions coming up next week or in the next couple of weeks. Um, but most importantly, on Wednesday, we have an Ash Wednesday service at seven o'clock. Um, hard to believe it's Ash Wednesday already. Uh, we'll be entering into Lent, and I'm told that it's going to be a pretty special service. Um, and then finally, next Sunday, we'll have Pastor Maria will be back with us, and we'll have our congregational meeting to um, hopefully vote on the Constitution. We had a meeting last week, Wednesday, I guess, that was very informational. Um, answered a lot of questions that people had. So our, our hope is that on Sunday we can pass the, con the proposed constitution and keep moving in a forward motion. Um, hopefully it won't be a long meeting. And um, that's what I have, what I know of for this week. Thank you.